All right, t- 10 miles today in the New Balance Beacons, and you saw me slip in that green insert inside the shoe. Basically, I'm trying to do everything in my power to help my legs recover uh, as much as possible before the next hard effort, which for me, today is Saturday, so that'll be on Monday. So basically, 48 hours from now, I'm going to do my next threshold run. You're welcome to come out if you live in Denver or or outside of Denver. Anybody can come. I'm going to do a two-mile warm-up at 7 a.m. in Washington Park and then do uh, a 13-mile threshold, basically my third to last hard effort before the marathon so anyway I'm trying with the compress usually I don't wear the compression sleeves on my calves Uh, when I run I like to wear them afterward but today I'm gonna wear them during the run again just to attempt to do everything in my power to help my legs freshen up for the next hard effort so anyway that's what we're doing today and I got the Spenco the green insert inside the New Balance beacons right now it's called Spenco and it's no arch support no nothing like that it's just a little little extra cushion to help take the edge off if you will from the pounding on the pavement all right let's do it 10 miles not uh, just you know bopping along basically bopping along all right in the baby blues the new balance beacons treated me well today uh feeling great except for allergies everything is starting to pop here in colorado the flowers everything's starting to come out so i think i actually the whole family's kind of suffering from from (coughs) some allergies right now so anyway uh recovering right now and then yes we're going to talk to you in a little bit about the running shoes that are working so so well in 2019 i gotta go get some water some some more shoe organization uh, accessories if you will and then also some biofreeze I feel like I'm uh, really putting a a lot of different um, oh I don't even know what to call it I guess basically pain relieving creams to the test during this training block just to help me get through it and survive a little bit but I I don't know I'll be curious to see how this one does it's called biofreeze I've tried blue emu I've tried uh, the Dolterra, or the, oh gosh, I uh, I can never remember the name of it. Blue Ice, something like that. And then of course, just the classic Icy Hot, and then even just the off-brand from uh, King Super. So uh, I'm going into Target, and then maybe Target has it actually, but I was actually gonna have to zip over to Walmart. I know they carry Biofreeze, which supposedly you had to get it over the counter at one point. But anyway, I know it's just more of a, a little bit more of just a masking agent to some of the soreness and pain I don't know maybe there's a little bit of benefit to rubbing it on your calves and your I don't know I'm a little I'm a little on the fence as far as uh, actually helping you overcome for example delayed onset muscle soreness anyway let's give it a shot here we go bio freeze is on the legs we shall see how it works and yeah it feels good right now but we'll just see in a couple days after using it for a couple days how the legs are reacting to the bio freeze okay Three running shoes that are working for me really well in 2019. Gonna break them down for you here in one second. And yes, working is the key word because these shoes, they are working. And how do I know that? Basically, I was like, gosh, there's, well, you go by feel, you go by comfort, you go by fits, you go by lockdown, you go by 
grip, especially on the trails. But the other way to determine, go to Strava and look and see what shoes have the most mileage in the last four months since 2000, 2019 started. So I did that and basically picked out the top three. There was one other that is is close. Actually, there's one, you know what it is. It's the Nike Vomero 14 is actually in second or third place for volume of miles right now for me, but it's not working. As you know, based on yesterday's vlog, I talked about three running shoes. Go check it out that are not working for me in 2019. Uh, well, I'll just let you go watch, watch it. One of them is the Nike Vomero 14. So that cannot be in today's vlog, that is for sure. And we're going to kick it off with a trail shoe. That's right. This trail shoe, you're probably not going to be shocked by any of these answers. But this trail shoe has, let me just double check. Yes, 221 miles in it. In the This shoe was really the bread and butter of my training early in the training block. So January, February, and March uh, to a certain extent. Uh, basically just putting in uh, high volume, but also vertical, vertical, vertical. The Big Bad Wolf, the Solomon Speed Cross 5. Oh, somehow I got my hands on this shoe early. Like it wasn't really available anywhere else except for REI.com. And I got my hands on a pair and put 221 miles into this shoe since uh, basically mid-January when I picked it up. It's a 10 millimeter drop. So pretty aggressive uh, drop for a trail shoe. Uh, let me just think uh, 10.6 ounces. Oh boy, 303 grams. So a heavier shoe as well. But if you look at the outsole pattern and for all these shoes I'm going to walk you through, I want to talk about durability. So after 221 miles and the speed cross five, I'm feeling good. In fact, I'm feeling great. The upper is intact completely. No issues with the upper at all. No signs of holes. No, it's even clean to a certain extent. I think it's running in all the snow this past winter. So the upper is good. Now the midsole is unique on the Speed Cross 5. It's a, it's a pretty, a fairly stiff shoe. It's got a little bit of flexibility through the toe box, uh, but Really, on the outsole, I'm just now at 221, starting to see a little bit of wear and tear through the lugs, and I believe these lugs, oh, I'll have to double check. I think they're either six millimeter lug depth. I don't think they're eight. I think they're six millimeter lug de depth. So they're, pre they're, they're tall, they're big, and they're great for the mud, great for the snow. They proved to be really effective uh, this past winter in the snow. So overall, I am incredibly pleased and I believe the Gore-Tex, the GTX version of the Speed Cross 5 is coming out in October of 2019, getting ready, I guess, for the, I don't know, the rainy season. I, I don't quite understand why they're waiting until then. Uh, but anyway, so that's the, the Gore-Tex version of this guy will be coming out. I'm so pleased, beyond pleased. And it's a little, it's a little aggressive, okay? This is not a buffed out trail type of running shoe, uh, trail shoe. This is an aggressive rocks, roots, mud uh, type of trail shoe. And I like the 10 millimeter drop because it basically, uh, it, it helps a little bit on those steep uphill sections when, so your heel basically is lifted off just a, li a little bit. So you're not dropping all the way down to the ground on every single foot strike uh, through your gait cycle. So boom, Speed Cross 5 is number one that is working for me in 2019. And number two, hold on, let me take it off my foot. That's right, it's the New Balance Beacon. It continues to thrive and strive. It's getting dirty. Uh, it's starting to it's starting to show some wear and tear. I will say that, and let me get you the mileage. So believe it or not, I'm actually not even at 100 miles yet. Just under 96 miles in this shoe. Uh, but, because why? Because usually, I use this shoe for easy recovery days. But today, I was like, you know what? My legs are tired. I want a little more cushion. Let's try it for 10 miles. And sure enough, it did well. I was a little surprised. Like, it's it's a neutral shoe, road shoe, uh, loosey-goosey, very flexible. But man, uh, as far as recovery goes, like, I'm tempted to try it once after the Cleveland Marathon in a long run. I've heard some people have raced a marathon in the New Balance Beacon. I wouldn't race a marathon, but for a long run, I would... I don't know. I might do it after Cleveland. We will see. Uh, so, so far, so good. And I should mention, so it's a six millimeter drop. Let me get you the weight. 
So it is 7.4 ounces, 210 grams, pretty lightweight for a, I don't know if I'd put it in the daily trainer category, uh, but I would put, for me again, I'm sticking it more in the easy day shoe, an easy day shoe, but man, it did feel good at 10 miles today. Um, okay, for durability, I am starting to see some wear and tear after, you know, just 96 miles through this outsole. Now it's, ex it's this exposed fresh foam so it's not protected by any rubber uh so i'm seeing it mostly so i'm a four foot striker it's basically right below my toes especially on the outside of the outsole and on this upper it's a true uh knit upper like it's really really a knit upper if i've ever seen one and these eyelets are starting to break down a little bit where i could foresee kind of tearing out an eyelet and once that happens you're kind of that's not good like it's hard to use a shoe if you're if an eyelet breaks down and so basically one last point as I continue to run high volume in this training block I am just my legs are barking at me and telling me I got to take care of them I need a little more cushion so that's why I wore the beacons today and I actually tossed in this green Spenco as I already talked about oh so the combination of the beacon and the Spenco today like I got done with a run and I was rejoicing I was re like my legs didn't hurt at all I wasn't like feeling like I overdid it today I just felt like I was getting ready for tomorrow and then the next day the big workout on Monday really really well so all right New Balance Beacon 2019 running shoe is really working for me one last point the the Beacon 2 I heard is coming out in July maybe even July 1st I'm I'm tempted to buy another Beacon before then because I love it so much but I might wait I don't know what I'm gonna do yet I might wait for the Beacon 2 to come out all right moving on to the last one here we go this one has is in second place as far as mileage goes and again you're probably not going to be surprised 196 miles in the nike pegasus 35 turbo it's hard to argue against the ride in the turbo the zoom x foam through the midsole uh no really no issues through the upper as far as durability is concerned and we're almost at 200 miles uh the outsole just a little bit again through the forefoot just starting to see a little bit of wear and tear uh through that outsole nothing like i it still has life in it i would suspect it could go another 200 miles based on looking at this outsole um and so what do i use this shoe for the pegasus 35 turbo more upbeat up tempo runs I did use it for a long run last week, 22 miles, because I'm kind of, well, the Vimero 14 is not working for me for a long run in 2019, so the Pegasus 35 Turbo has kind of, it ha has had to pick up the slack for the Vimero 14, uh, but I did try a, basically a threshold run, so I was striving for 520 pace, and I did not like the Turbo at a fast, fast pace. Uh, it just didn't feel, it felt too mushy, a little too loosey-goosey through, uh, through the upper, and I didn't have, but for a long run, middle distance run, and uh, even to a certain extent, a tempo run, I think the turbo is really, really treating, it's, it's just treating me nice. And again, after a middle distance or long run, my legs don't feel completely shot. Uh, it, it, it's starkly different than let's say the Audios 4 or even to a certain extent the Carbon Rocket, the Hoka Carbon Rocket as far as how my legs feel after a long run or a middle distance run. So all right, some specs real quick. 10 millimeter drop. I believe it's a 22 millimeter stack height in the heel, 12 in the forefoot. Let me get you the weight. 7.3 ounces, 207 grams, and I apologize, I actually forgot that I had the Spenco in the New Balance Beacon when I just weighed it, so it's probably it's just a little teeny tiny bit lighter than what I told you. Um, but for the Turbo, um, is again, it's 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 treating me really nice. And the question becomes for me: Will the Turbo be the long run shoe? And like for me, long runs, like I don't go, I like to keep them. A, honest pace not a hard pace but an honest pace so it'll be interesting to see if the turbo is the summer 2019 long run shoe middle distance shoe i'm kind of open actually at this point after cleveland after may 19th i'm going to be kind of open to exploring new shoes again leading into a peak race i guess a little tip of the day i don't like to change up shoes too much uh if something's working stick with it until you get through that peak race so we're we're actually when you're watching this on sunday we're exactly four weeks out uh, from the marathon. So anyway, there you go. We got the Solomon Speed Cross 5, the New Balance Beacon, and the Nike Pegasus 35 Turbo. All three of these shoes are really, 
really working for me in 2019. I love them all. They all serve different purposes, uh, but they're just treating me real, real well. All right, question of the day. What is your favorite running shoe in 2019 thus far? All right, what are you grabbing for the most? That's another way to think about it. If you struggle answering that question, are you like, okay, I'm lean, I grab for this one out of the closet more than any other. That probably means it's your favorite. All right, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Thanks for being here.